is example four in the differentiation topic, having looked at differentiating from first principles. So we're going to look at a new differentiation technique, which will allow us to differentiate more complex functions than perhaps we're already used to. And this is a particular rule is called the product rule because we're going to be able to differentiate two functions or, or terms in X which are multiplying together, a product of terms. And in this example four, it says differentiate the, func the function f of X equals X plus one squared. There's a term in X multiplied by X minus three to the power four. Now, in your polynomial differentiating, you would have to multiply out those brackets and then simplify everything to get individual powers of x and their coefficients. It's going to take a lot of time. We have a method that will ab will able to do this a wee bit quicker. It's called using the product rule. And as we've just been looking at, the product rule can be written in a, in a variety of ways. Uh, we're basically saying that for the derivative of a function f prime x, if you want to use a little shortcut, we're talking about u dash v plus u v dash. Technically, we should have u uh, dash of x or u prime x and v of x, but we've, I've left out these uh, little uh, brackets with the x in it just for convenience as much as anything. So we've got to substitute in for u and v. We've got to define at the side of the, the page what u and v represent. And basically we say u is the first term. So u is x plus 1 squared. And v is the second term. And in this product rule you can see that we have to also know the derivative of each of these u dash and v dash. So in having separated them we can then use our previous knowledge, in this case of the chain rule. This is a function within a function here, x plus 1 all squared. So the chain rule says differentiate the outer term. So we can say it's 2 times x plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the inside function or the term in the bracket, which happens to be 1. And therefore, I have uh, the answer is 2 times x plus 1. For uh, v dash, same idea, v dash is equal to 4 times x minus 3. Now remember, I have to reduce the power by 1 uh, to the power of 3, multiplied by the derivative of the term inside the bracket, which again happens to be 1. So I don't need to multiply uh, anything into that. So I've got my two derivatives, which means that I'm ready then to substitute these in into our overall expression. So f prime x is equal to u dash v. So we've got u dash. Let's just make sure u dash times v. Make sure, having written them down, that you correctly use the, the term. So we've got u dash is 2 times x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 3 to the power 4 plus u times v dash, or the derivative of v. So let's just do that. So we've got u and v dash. So we're using the alternate terms here. So we've got x plus 1 squared multiplied by 4. Now, you might want to put the 4 straight away. Um, let's do a bit sprint. You might want to put the 4 straight away at the beginning of that term, or you could leave it to simplify it. I'll just rewrite it. Okay. So we have an answer there, which has two terms in it. We can simplify that sometimes. So you have to be able to look out to see if you can 
simplify it any further. It's not, it's not really a big deal, uh, I think, if you don't. But let's just try and tidy it up because you will find using the product rule in this kind of situation that you have similar terms which are different by just the power of one because you've been differentiating. So we've got a common factor of the number terms of two. So we've got two and a four. So my common factor is two. In terms of the next term, which is x plus 1 to the power 1 and x plus 1 squared, then the largest common factor is the lower of the two, so that's just x plus 1. And in terms of the x minus 3 to the 4 and x minus 3 to the power 3, remember that the highest common factor is always the smaller of the two powers, so it becomes x minus 3 cubed. That's actually the whole common factor. If we want to look at what then goes inside the bracket, we then go back to the first term and think what uh, is left. What if we, if we divide through by our common factor, we're actually only left with one lot of x minus 3. Everything else is part of the common factor. And then we've got plus. Uh, you notice that it's the, the, with the number, the 4 here is... Uh, bigger than the common factor, so I have to put a 2 at the beginning there. And the terms are different only by the x plus 1 term. So I can say that my term on the right-hand side we'll be left with is 2 times x plus 1. And I can simplify that last bracket there. What have I got left? I've got x minus 3 plus 2x plus 2 effectively. So I can just say that we've got 3x negative 3 plus 2 is minus 1. And there we have our answer. So sometimes it is helpful to simplify, but sometimes in actual fact doing a process like that doesn't actually simplify it algebraically and therefore there's not much point. So you only do it if you really feel that you can make the, the expression simpler or smaller or more concise. Okay, So that's the product rule. We'll give you another couple of examples so that you can keep practicing it. Okay.